Supporting environment is the seventh area of focus that has been approved by the Rotary Foundation trustees and Rotary International Board of Directors. Rotary District 9212, that included Kenya, targets to grow 1 million trees per country within this Rotary year as to mitigate climate change. It is for this reason that Rotary Club of Nairobi South invited Theodore Kinyanjui, who has vast knowledge and experience on tree planting, for a talk that will later lead to partnership and see him work with the club in ensuring that the tree planting target is met. So my name is Tadi Kinenjui. I am the co-founder of Seedballs Kenya and a director at Cookswell Energy Saving Chico. So we started our family business back in the early 1980s making energy saving Jikos. So ones for cooking at home, for roasting nyama. The thing we came to realize was you don't only have to be efficient with charcoal, but you have to grow more charcoal for the future. And so that's what gave birth to our program called Seedballs Kenya, which was as a result of trying to find ways, how do we reduce the cost of planting trees in dry land parts of Kenya and we found that doing direct seeding is probably the best way of doing this. Indigenous tree is a type of tree species that has historically evolved to be living in Kenya. So for you know tens of thousands of years that same type of tree has always been living in Kenya ecosystems and Kenyan landscapes versus one like the exotic trees like the eucalyptus or grevillea that were brought here by the colonialists at the turn of the century. So the big thing that that's so important with indigenous trees is because they've been part of Kenyan landscapes for so many years, they've evolved in tandem with the Kenyan birds, the Kenyan bees, the Kenyan insects, so all of the different local wildlife, down to bacteria in the soil. That's something that's been co-evolved to work symbiotically with indigenous trees. The opposite is when you do exotic trees, there might not be the type of bird that wants to live in an acacia or in a eucalyptus or something, and then that hurts biodiversity in the long run. I am a Rotary member of Rotary Club of Nairobi South. I'm a past president, but this year I am the project's director. I got to know him a long time ago. I've known him since he was born and his father was into energy conservation. He started making the Kemaki Jiko, and I am sure that every household has them because all the Juakali centers were taught how to make them, some copied them, and they are all over the place. So many, the, I, I would believe that almost every household has a Kemaki Jiko. Uh, that's what his father invented. He took that over and started making even bigger jikos that he is even exporting abroad, which uh, you can bake in them and you can also choma nyama. You know in Kenya we love nyama choma. Yeah, okay. Yes, so he now has innovated the seed balls, mm -hmm. which uh, we can throw out into the open or you can grow them in your houses. You can grow them as fences around the houses. Some of the seedlings have short growing um, trees. Seedballs Kenya decided to reassess and repackage seeding, making the process of spreading seeds easier and efficient. The main motivation behind the seed balls program was really to look at a way of reducing the cost for people to participate in forest restoration, specifically in the dry land parts of Kenya that have been historically producing the most charcoal for all of the urban areas in the country. So the big benefit from society on the sort of initial thing is energy security. We know that 60-70% of Kenyans cook with solid fuel, with firewood or with charcoal every single day and we've been doing that for the last 50 years almost. Sometimes when we actually find this charcoal dust that we buy from the guys selling in the marketplaces, we find coins from 1920 in the very bottom. Those coins have the hole in them. So it shows Kenya has been consuming charcoal and trees for you know 100 years. And being able to make sure we not only regrow what's been cut, but grow a new batch of trees to use in the future is critical. And then all the ecosystem services, trees provide rain, they hold the soil, they provide, you know, the habitat for all of the insects and the birds. And from not only, again, not only just trees, not only grasses, but so many other indigenous plants, all of the beautiful wildflowers. You know, we have 6,000 different types of plants that are indigenous to Kenya. If we can bring that to more people to be able to grow and enjoy and benefit from, you know, I'll be a very happy man. Tree planting programs aim at boosting the country's forest cover.
Probably one of my biggest achievements, and as a whole organization's biggest achievement has really been, is bringing tree planting to be a very fun and enjoyable thing. You know, when I was a kid, I loved my teachers from school, but tree planting was punishment. You know, if you do something wrong, you have to carry water, you have to go and weed them. And as a 10-year-old boy, I remember thinking, you know, you're meeting him, it's making me do extra work. And I don't think that's the message we want to tell the youth. You want to be able to tell the youth, you can become a pilot one day, you'll be flying an airplane throwing seeds, you can become a scientist learning about this type of medicine from that tree or whatever. And especially this engagement of fun things like using the slingshot, the little fea for shooting the seeds, you know, that's something that I think imprints in young people's brains that the environment is fun, the environment's cool, this is something really good to be doing. And that's one of the most important things we need to be teaching people today. How it works is say you're our customer and you might be from, you know, you know, Kisumu or Voi or whatever, we work backwards and we ask people, what are people, what are the indigenous trees that people are cutting down where you're from? What are they cutting for charcoal in your village? That's what we need to plant more of because it means they're being cut and it means they grow there naturally. So we try to always work backwards with our customers and advise them to grow more of the same thing that occurs in their part of Kenya. Uh, for the manufacturing process, first off we go to Kefri, Kenya Forest Research Institute. We work with a wonderful man there called Mike Messo who organizes all the seeds and everything. And then we buy the charcoal dust from the people in the markets where they're selling it, bring all of that to Langata, to Char Dust Limited, where my friend and co-founder, Elson Karstad, now works his magic and makes the seed balls. From there, distribution typically, and it's amazing in this day and age because so much is M-Pesa and you can send on G4S or Fargo. So, you know, we get a call, I need five kilos of tree seeds. I'm in Lodoar, I'm in Narok, I'm in Wajir, I'm in, you know, you name it, Kwale, whatever. Send them out to those people with some planting tips and then do follow-ups on how did it go? How is it working? Can you send us a map pin so that over the years to come, we'll be able to see what the success has been with doing this direct seeding. As with everything, there are always challenges. Anything new, of course, is sometimes challenging um, to explain and show how it's working. Uh, trees, of course, don't grow very quickly. So, you know, people are impatient. In this day and age, everyone's Instagram and Facebook and I need results today. So to encourage people to think about 10, 20, 30 years in the future is sometimes challenging. Um, and then I'd say the only other really biggest challenge you know, luckily we're not so many. We've had the ground paved by wonderful ladies like this, people like Gary Madai, who've been able to teach so many people about the importance of the environment. So at least we have that foot, you know, already in the door. Theodo is also involved in several other projects beneficial to the society. So with our main business, with the Cooksville Energy Saving GECOs, we help te people set up baking businesses, um, learn how to do baking as a business with the ovens. Uh, we do a lot of outreach on teaching people different uses, different uses of charcoal. So you don't only make charcoal for cooking. You can also make charcoal for soil, for growing, the biochar is called. You mix it in with the soil. There's a method that you can catch the smoke during the charcoal making and make something called wood vinegar that is actually more expensive than even the charcoal itself. We've even actually made charcoal earrings for ladies that are very trendy and fashionable. So we really like to try and look at the entire value chain behind dryland trees. What are all these different alternative products that people are able to commercialize sustainably. Right. For a program to be successful, you, have to, you can't do things alone. You have to have partners. And we've been incredibly lucky from the very, very beginning within my family business. I work with my two older sisters and my mom. And, you know, they're my best partners and best supporters in the world. And my girlfriend, Nadia, who does lion conservation, so she's in the conservation arena. Um, almost all of my good friends that I've grown up with, some work in elephant conservation, some do energy-saving buildings. So it's been really wonderful wonderful having that social support network of like-minded people who love the environment. Beyond that, it's so important to engage with all types of different groups like Nairobi Rotary Club, who is so interested in helping build a better country and a better Kenya in the future that is more green with more forests. We've had wonderful luck with so many different tourism partners all over Kenya. When the tourists come and go on vacation, they're able to take seed balls and plant them. Um, churches, mosques, Hindu temples, uh, schools from high school to university to primary. So we've luckily had tons of different wonderful partners, awesome, good local press like KBC's helped spread the word about what we're doing. And I think with anything, especially to do with the environment, because it affects all of us, you have to do it all together. Supporting the environment will give Rotary Club members even more ways to create more positive impact in the society. My name is Liz Kitonga. 
I'm the current president of the Rotary Club of Nairobi South. And uh, at Rotary, what we do is serve the community. Actually, our theme the, for this year is serving the community. So um, what we have planned for this Rotary year is mostly to conserve the environment and to, to plant more trees, to clean up rivers, to clean up uh, you know, uh, all this garbage and all that. We are hoping to work with the county government and you know, the other organizations to, um, to clear, clear up uh, the environment as much as possible. We also have a plan to empower, a project to empower youth uh, we have a project to empower youth. We are going to engage people living with disabilities. We are going to, uh, to teach them some skills to, you know, just empower them to, you know, just you know, have something to do with, with, to, to make themselves like economically stable. And also, we have some other projects. We have a mother and child project that was started last year by the past president. So the project basically is just like to uh, plant spinach and kumawiki. Uh, to then we give them. This is done at Makongeni dispensary in Thika. So we planted some vertical gardens last year, and we are hoping to increase those vertical gardens this year to, to you know, uh, get more people involved in this. And also, we normally have a project in December where we normally, last year we didn't do it because of the COVID situation. Uh, we normally like get uh, people, people from children's homes, people from elderly homes, all these disadvantaged people, we normally bring them together and take them out for, for like a day outing, like at Westgate shopping mall, whereby they just enjoy their day. Because these people, they hardly ever go out, you know, they, nobody, if, well, they, they, they'll be brought for food, they'll be brought for, you know, clothes and all that, but nobody ever takes them out. So we also, we also do that. Another project we do is, um, we normally have a, a day also for outing whereby all the Rotary clubs come together and we have a big rally, there are musicians, there's food, there's everything, we organize transport for them to be brought into one particular place whereby we just give them entertainment for the day. Personally, I'm very passionate about the environment. Uh, my year actually started this year in July, uh, just, just the other day, just the year. So because I'm passionate about the environment and one of our members is also passionate about the environment and knows Theodore. So she invited him to come over and, and work with us. Yeah, so that's where we are now and we are all looking to work with him. We'll also do like, uh, with, we'll work with other clubs. We have RC Kikuyu who are already on board. We have uh, RC Gigiri who are already on board. We have a Rotaracta club who are already on board and we're hoping to ask, uh, uh, approach other clubs to come and work with us. In his final remarks, this is what Yodo had to say. There couldn't be anything more important for this generation that we're living in, and this time in the world, for people to realize how not only how important it is to do good things for the environment, but the job opportunities that are involved in that. And from being a climate change scientist to being a simple tree planter to just using one less plastic bag when you go out to thinking about where do you buy your clothes? Where do you source all of your products? You know, are you shopping ethically? Are you thinking about the producers, the social impacts? That right now, if we don't all get on board with doing that, if we think we have problems in the world today, just it's going to get worse if we don't change how we all live and how we all behave and consume at the end of the day.